not things to be molded, but to be unfolded. This is going to be a wonderful opportunity for each of them. So, mark your calendars for some really super exciting things for this year. College essay writing will happen on PSAT day. While all of our underclassmen are taking PSAT, our seniors will have an opportunity to do college essay writing. We have the College and Career Fair coming up October 30th. FASCA Boot Camp will do one of those in January. Then you will have the Sports Awards Night, June 2nd. Senior Awards Night, June 5th. Cultural Arts, May 28th. Senior Prom, June 11th. Everything leading up to June 21st, graduation day. We will be back at PACE again. You will continue to hear some information about graduation, but again, all roads lead to June 21st. Just wanted to start out, I know that there are always some questions around our house team, who's on the house team, so that is again just a, another thing that you can take a picture of. We will also make sure in my old blast tomorrow that I send this out. But Ms. Mingo is the House One Assistant Principal, and you'll see the counselors that she works with. Right now, we're in the process of hiring a House Two Assistant Principal. So for now, that is me. I take off one hat, put on another hat. But again, I've, been an, I've had an opportunity to be in our House Assemblies with our students. And so if you have any questions as far as anything that's happening with your student and they're in House Two, please stop by and, or give me a call, and I can support. Mr. Sheikha Guasha is the assistant principal for House 3, and Ms. Kittles is the house assistant principal for House 4. So we're just going to take a couple of moments to just go over some expectations, some reminders. We had our house assemblies with our students just last week. We went over some of these reminders. And so the first one is just reminding them, I know the senioritis kicks in, senior year, and you sometimes have to really push your student to get into every single one of their classes. Remember to tell them senior year matters, okay? So they still want to make sure they keep that same momentum that they had freshman year, sophomore, junior year, senior year matters. When you realize that that senioritis is kicking in, please Make sure you reach out to any of their teachers, their guidance counselors, they need a little push. The village has to come together maybe to push them along, but just reminding them that attendance is important. Just some guidelines. Make sure if you don't have it already, you should, but make sure you have access to Parent Portal. If any of your contact information has changed, make sure you update it. Just because if students are absent from class, or they, if anything is happening, you can see it on Parent Portal. So just making sure your contact information is up to date on Parent Portal and that you have access to it. This is just pretty much letting you know that if the student is absent, it's just a reminder that it's a loss of instructional time. So we really want to make sure that there is each and every one of their classes. Policies. I'm not going to go through all of our policies and procedures. I only put these up because these are some that we spoke to our students about that are fairly new. So just a reminder that we open our doors at 7.30 each morning. And students are not going to be allowed to go upstairs until 7.55. If they need to meet with another teacher or their part of science research, we'll make sure that they have a pass so that they can do that. But we're not allowing students up and through the building before 7.55 and our doors are not going to open until 7.30. So this is something that we share with our students. We also have lots of conversations around cell phone policies. And if you know there's been such a push to really ban cell phones in schools, and we're not at that point right now, but what we've said to our students is that the Board of Education has a policy on cell phones, and it's that cell phones should be off and away. They should not be out during instructional time. And now every class has been fitted with what we call a cell phone holder or a cubby, so that if they bring the cell phone into the class, we will ask them to put the cell phone in the cubby so that they don't have it with them, okay? So one of the things we said to them is that their teachers are designing amazing lessons, their peers are there to have a conversation with them, 
We don't want them to be focused on what's happening on Snapchat. If they're going to the bathroom, they've said, Ms. Langley, can we take our phones? Ms. Langley has said no. It's unsanitary, and I want you to hurry up and come back to class. So if you're trying to get in contact with your student and they said, my phone is away, we really have asked them to put it in the cell phone company or it needs to stay in your backpack. If there is a family emergency, do not hesitate to reach out to the main office, the counselor, can you get my students so they can come down, whatever it may need to be, we will do that. But we are really asking that their phones are off and away during classroom instruction time. The BOCES bus, if your student is a part of BOCES, and they take the BOCES bus, there are three bus runs, 7.30, 9.30 is the next one, and 11.30, it's really important that they make it to their BOCES bus on time. If for any reason they miss that BOCES bus, it's usually about three periods long they would be at BOCES, we ask that they return home and then come back. Why? Because for three periods, that means that they would just be wandering our homes. And we already have a building where it's a bit overcrowded to begin with, that's a plug for the bond. So I really want to make sure that our students are where they need to be, meaning getting on the BOCES bus, but if they missed it, we will ask that they return home and come back when it's time for their next course, their next classes. Student parking. Since I'm in a room with seniors here, parents, I know it's an amazing thing when your child gets a driver's license and they want to take the family car to, to school. That is awesome. I've seen some kids pull up in better cars than me. No judgment, that's okay. But there is no parking on our school grounds for students. So they will have to park on the park for street parking because the parking lots are only for faculty. We don't have enough parking for students and for faculty. So if you get a call from any of the assistant principals saying, we had to tell your student to come back out and move the car because the security is watching the lot, please know that we then want you to have a conversation with your student to say, you cannot park in the school lots, okay? So just parking lots, parking is for faculty only. Safety and security. We made sure we purchased lanyards for all IDs. Every student has an ID. They have to tap in and out of the building for safety reasons. There are times that we realize students may forget their IDs and what we've said to them just to make sure that they know and understand the policy. Our upperclassmen, which would apply to your students, if they forget their IDs, they are not allowed to tap out to leave campus during the day because we try to let them know that it's really about safety. They should have their IDs on them at all points in time. They needed to tap in. If they wanted to leave and they don't have their ID, we will ask them to remain in the building. Okay, so having their ID every day is super important. All of our exterior doors are armed. I should say alarmed, so students leave through the main entrance or the back entrance, but they can only come in through the back entrance. Okay, which is a double entry. Um, visitors can only come from the main entrance. Just to note that we have 13 security guards in this building at this point in time, security guards and monitors. And we also have Officer Valencia from the Austin Police Department, who is our school resource officer. He came over to us this year from AMD. He has established amazing relationships with so many of our students. Our families tend to know him also. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to them. Community service. Just a reminder that every student has to complete, by their 12th grade year, 28 hours of community service. So it really should be seven each year. But when it gets time now where you have to buy prom tickets, we've reminded students you cannot buy prom tickets until you've completed your 28 hours of community service. <laughs> it is our way of giving back to the Austin community, and so we like to remind our students that this is their responsibility, this is their duty as a student, and so it's 28 hours of community service each year. What are other things that take away other than the prom? Prom is good enough? No video game for a week. <laughs> being on their transcript as just, um, is it a, what is it on the transcript? So it just basically just shows that it's not high. It's not okay. 
start. I got to think about it. <laughs> but it's 28 hours of community service, and there are many opportunities to do community service within the community. Many folks that will sign off on it, provided that they're supporting freshman orientation. We had students that showed up knowing they needed community service to get back to the school. So any way that they can, we can. We're willing to provide it. needs to be done by May 1st. And this is just the last thing. I know that as many of you walked in, there's a table outside that's talking a little bit more about our bond vote. Um, please come on out, vote on the 24th. And this is just a little bit, some of the things that are different. A new building for 7th and 8th grade, uh, six new classes at Claremont and a new surgery, the renovations of the old church in the high school. And, and as it connects to the high school, there are so many wonderful areas that we're looking to really incorporate into that. Renovated classrooms, so as I talked about sometimes the overcrowding in our building, this is a way for us to really enlarge our footprint, better spaces, there's amazing design. So as you leave here, please take a look out at the table at the designs that are, uh, that are forthcoming as far as the bond and what it can look like, and please come out and vote on the 24th, all right? That is all for my segment. I am going to toss it over to Mr. Ducos. Oh. Is there a what? I don't, I don't think that it is. I'm looking in the back. Are our two superintendents, assistant superintendents, Ms. Myers? I don't, I don't believe there's early voting. Okay, and no, no write in, like a mail in? Uh, like a mail in vote? I don't believe so, but what we'll do is we'll follow up tomorrow, okay. just to make sure. Okay. If your son wants to walk through the door, service? I know, right? <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Langley. Round of applause. Madam President, Principal First Lady, all of you love it. So inside. So for those that don't know me, I'm Jeremy Ducos. I have the pleasure of serving the amazing school counseling department across our now, I believe, third through twelfth grade. Um, but here we have eight amazing school counselors. I'm the director of school counseling. It is my third year in the district. I feel like I've grown with your students, but I still have a lot to learn. However, I think we kind of got this college thing somewhat down pat. Right. After last year, I was like, I, with three new counselors, welcoming, welcoming them into the district, allowing them to kind of provide the support and necessary needs that they can bring to the table, we have an awesome year plan for your students. And you saw some of those dates earlier, but we're looking forward to those dates. The college essay writing, the uh, college fair. In addition to that, every single day, there was a college in our museum room speaking with your students. So through Naviance, if they go on their student page, they can see what college is coming in that day. We also do announcements, and we also have it on the main screen. Every single last year, we had 80 plus colleges visit, right? And the colleges love speaking with your students. And I'll give a quick story. We had a young person last year. I'm not going to drop names. I don't do that. I'm a counselor. Uh, but we had a young person last year. They applied to, to um, one of the SUNYs, and they had not gotten in. They got waitlisted. So one of our counselors reached out and said, "Hey, you know this student? They were at that museum room, and they're the ones that actually that final question." And Craig Barkley from SUNY, who, who he'll be back, um, who was like, yeah, I remember that student. Hold on, let me see what I can do. And he reached out to folks in EOP. He reached out to folks in admissions. And that student got a second look at their application and ended up getting accepted. Right? So those moments are important. The college fairs, if you're visiting colleges, writing your name on the list, all of that matters. All right? So before we dive into this, I want everybody to take a deep breath. Because <sighs> it's going to be a fun year. Right? We're going to have ups, and I say we because the counselors are in it with you all. Ms. Langley and I, we're in it with you all. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs, there's going to be times where your student closes their door for a week. Right? We go through it with you all as well. Right? That chair in the, on the stage symbolizes that though our students may not be here tonight, they're always with us. You like that? I just forgot the chair. <laughs> as, as Ms. Langley was playing her video, I was like, damn, I left the chair up there. <laughs> My ADHD kicked in, I was like, this is not good. So with that said, SpongeBob, what do you call a stress-free college experience? Imagination. It kind of doesn't exist, to be honest. She's with me in the back, or they're with me in the back. So with that said, right, the whole application process, things might be seen as though they're going smoothly. 
and then a grad assistant from SUNY Buffalo emails you, right? And they're like, hey, we're missing something from your application. Your application was due two weeks ago. Stress level goes through. We'll handle it, we work on it, we know how to work with these grad assistants, right? Um, a lot of our uh, colleagues at the higher end of our understaff. But again, we're here to support you so that this stress level isn't at 100, it's at like a 50. We try to monitor it, right? But we don't like to lie and say, this is gonna be completely stress-free. There's gonna be some stressful points of this process, but we're in it together. Naviance, now, I love Naviance when I first came here. I, I was a Naviance connoisseur when I was working at the uh, New York City Department of Education. And what I found here through our data is that our students do not log on to Naviance until their senior year. So it's fact. Last year, we had a student log on to Naviance 353 times in their senior year. Guess how many times they logged on 9 through 10 as a total? Guess. Close, 10. Close, yeah, 10. See? <laughs> Kinetic energy, there it is. 10 times, but then this person in September all the way to March, 355 times, right? So what I tell students is it's, it's, it's a very simple tool to use, right? Um, and I try to get our underclassmen as involved as, as possible with the Naviance, but now that they're on it, this is our go-to tool for everything, for letters of recommendation. And again, I'm gonna be sharing this presentation, so all the blue lovely hyperlinks, if you click on it, it takes you to someplace cool. Some of it is a funny video, I'm joking. But anyway, so Naviance, we send our official transcripts through there, so we send it mid-year and end of year. And what the counselors will do, and you'll see a transcript form that I'm going to post, is they send the transcript to your student's school through request, okay? So Naviance will send official transcripts mid-year and end year. Letters of recommendation. Your students will request their teacher's letter for letters of recommendation through Naviance, and we'll send it through Naviance as well. Um, and again, the mid-year and final report cards. Transcript release form. like. I was in a meeting with my school counselor from the high school, and I do go, so you have to let students know about this form. Now, I know there's a lot of parents here this evening, but please, when you go back to your student, tell them the importance of this form, because counselors truly need to know where they're sending those transcripts, right? So oftentimes, I'll tell you, like a scenario will be, Ms. Cuddy will be in the back of the room, she'll be working on a 10th grade schedule, and a student will not be like, they didn't get my transcript. And Ms. Cuddy will be like, oh, how did that happen? And they'll be like, did you fill out the transcript request form? And the student will be like, what is that? So this is the transcript request form. We're going to highlight it, we're going to hyperlink it. This lets us know, because we have students that apply to three schools, and then we have students that apply anywhere up to 15 to 18 schools. So, right? so this just helps the school counselor know, where am I sending those documents? Yes? So typically you want to do it two weeks before the deadline. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So two weeks before that deadline. However, students can do it early. Like we have some students that already have their kind of college list ready. They can begin to work in that form, submit it, and we can begin to sub submit some of these items earlier. Right? We always encourage students, don't wait for that two weeks. If you have things done, by all means, go to your counselors. Now, I will say this. Counselors, the first couple days of school, we did a lot better this year. Um, appointments were back to back to back in terms of scheduling. Now they transition to college application and working with seniors, right? Reviewing essays, things of that nature, reviewing college lists, talking about the Naviance process. They're pushing into senior classes the week of September 24th. They're going to talk to every single senior student and encourage every single senior student to make appointments with them. The best way to speak with the counselor is an appointment, okay? Sean, am I right with that? Right? The best way to speak with your school counselor, and again, it could be anywhere from 15 to a full period, the best thing is they walk in, they see lovely Kevin Manazzi's face, and they say, can I please make an appointment with my school friends? All right? So again, the, the, uh, the Naviance teachers, we already had some, I had to do the school profile, so we already have some students that have already completed some of these things. Request of the teacher recommendations through Naviance, again, two weeks in advance when they need the recommendation. We have amazing teachers. We do, like truly amazing. Um, and again, as the semester begins to kick up, as does your work, as it is, does grading, as does, you know, um, reviewing assessments, as does lesson planning. And for any of you that are teachers in the room, it really starts to get there fast. So what we try to encourage our students to do is, is as early as possible, just try to let your, your teachers know that you're going to be putting them down in Naviance for those weeks. Okay?
So they yeah. So the counselor will write a letter on behalf of the student. Right, so it will be anonymous. No, so the counselor themselves will see that they, yeah, because typically when a student, the rule of thumb is when a student needs two or three letters of teacher direct, also a school counselor needs to submit a letter on behalf of that student. Yeah, correct. Yeah, it's usually for the teachers, because again, that's a great question, right? So with that said, as a school counselor, I know my student, right? However, a student can ask any teacher that they've had over the course of their year for those letters.
the Austin Public Library is hosting, and I'm going to send it to those 58 students. For that, for that specific SAT, they're having an SAT prep class. Okay, so um, over the course of the next couple weekends, there'll be the Austin Public Library will have um, prep classes for math and English. Um, so I'll send that to those students that are registered for the October 15th. Okay. But yeah, all of these are hyperlinked, uh, normal deadline, and the SAT is fully digital for those that don't. Okay. Back to the SAT quickly, I know, um, so with this said, there's a lot of chatter in higher education about the SAT coming back. There's a lot of research on it. There are some colleges that are still holding firm. Right? We do see a trend of more and more colleges they're optional, right? So they're optional SAT, but some of the um, former IVs that were optional have uh, redacted that and gone back to SAT requirements, right? I'm talking about the Columbia, so I just want to put that out there. Caltech recently jumped back in. Um, Georgia Tech schools like that, okay? So we are seeing like this slight trend of some colleges requiring the exam. So just be mindful when you're a student, like I would say a year ago, there were more colleges that were optional, right? Um, some of those colleges are now requiring the exam. Ms. Lang, do you have a question? I can post that on the website as well. These are all, yeah. So with that said, December 7th and March 8th, if Students register, they'll take it at a separate location. But your students are seniors, so they're probably going to take the October 5th, November 2nd um, exams. Yes, ma'am. So it really depends, right? Because the, the scores, there's still a super score system that exists, right? So if there's strategy going into it, if you're going to prepare, right? if you did well on the math and you want to try to do better on the evidence based reading and writing, you may want to take it again. So typically two times um, we ask our students to take it. Because some of our students are like, oh, one and done, I'm good. I'm like, you have a pretty decent score, you may want to take it again. Okay? They do. So now with the um, the application, it's all, like the most of the accommodations are on the app. Let's talk, I think, okay, we're gonna talk about the accommodation. Yeah, because most accommodations are through the Google app, but then there's times where, again, there's a window where a student would have to apply, um, depending on the, the uh, okay? So that's kind of like a... So the system kind of does it. So College Board does it, right? So yes, it, it automatically kind of like selects the field for it. Because even on their Naviance, it counts as what it is. So if you notice Naviance, I just uploaded some scores from August. Yeah, so I've uploaded some scores from August already, and it super scored a lot of our students' scores. Oh, they're not, so you would know right now if that, if that school is uh, test optional or not. So they can't just like in September, in uh, November, be like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to make students submit an SAT. They can't do that. So whatever is instilled now is what they have to abide by. Because admissions teams set their policy up in March of uh, the previous school. Send your scores in. That's what that's what happens. That's what, yeah, that's what the so they're taking. The, no, but when the college board sends it, that's how it's sent. Like again, through the college board application, it's typically sending. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 
So again, here's some of the eight. We don't offer the ACT, so here's some. Uh, yeah, we do what dates? I'm sorry. Yeah. So we offer October 26th and June 14th. So again, last day for our senior state is October 26th. I will say an ACT is more of a Midwest slash Western test. New York, um, a lot of New York schools aren't known, but it is a good option for our students to take this one. Because sometimes our students are better taking the four uh, co uh, core courses as opposed to just evidence-based reading and writing. So that one has the science and the social studies component. So again, before completing the application and sending essays in, we encourage our students to get as many eyes as possible on it. Right? They have your eyes, they have their English teachers, they have their school counselor, if they have an English teacher from 10th grade, right? That truly does help if they come to the college essay writing opportunity on October the 9th. That helps. Um, so it is good to get an essay looked at so that folks can provide feedback. So that's a really good question. It shouldn't be a general writing essay. And it's kind of mixed. So what I mean by that is they should tailor it to the institution that they're writing to, right? Because again, what essentially happens is, is the institution will kind of get an understanding of how much research. It's almost like a job interview, right? When you're applying for a job and you're writing kind of your, your, um, your introductory letter, you're kind of telling them why you want to participate in their company, right? So oftentimes I tell students to do the research, so the mission statement, Right now with AI, it's kind of like, it actually helps our students in research and institutions, but now Beyond tells us that, when students can go on college, like virtual college tours. I was once told by University of Chicago Director of Admissions that the one reason that they looked into one of the students that applied to their school was because the student had wrote, had written their essay and talked about how they couldn't wait to study where the Adam Wallace screen. And how a university that is known for such freedom and liberties, right, is something so like tragic and atrocity and they were like, wow, like this student did their research to find out that the below four of our library was actually with the ideas and the construction of the Adam Right? So that little bit was like history of U Chicago. Right? So the Common App has the, the short essays. Short essay questions, but they can they give you like five essay topics to write about. So the student will select one of those five, right? Um, I believe that like the Common Act also had a stat, like 33% of students across the country usually pick the um, tell us more about yourself and what you'll need to our institution. Like there's usually one bullet like that. Uh, but however, if you can take any of those five and then show the face yourself as a student on their campus, that's it. Yeah. So this is the, the Common Act. So yeah, through the Common App will be their short response answers, this profile. Um, again, they're gonna they're gonna even through that they'll do like a, a secondary school report, which they self-report some of their things, but then the counselor then kind of confirms it on it. Okay, but it's not like they self-report things that they 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 basically know the courses that they're taking, things like that. But a lot of that we also produce on the transcript, which makes it easy for our institution because when we send our mid-year transcripts, even the transcripts we send now. The students' um, courses are on. So, that mm -hmm. No, no, not. So, that one, there's, to clarify, there's one essay. Okay. The SUNYs, they will just take the supplemental responses. Right? So each, as you go through this process with your student, you'll see that each institution's common app will have either upload your essay here, 
fill in your fill in response here, things like that. They're all like differentiated pending on the institution. So the Common App, again, there, so that link, we'll have a bunch of links here. The Common App is its own lovely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the college can help them walk through it. Um, but what I suggest students is just like save those three components on their, their um, history board, or the, the top part. But the Common App is one that they're constantly going to go in, because that's where they were finding their short responses, their essays, things like that. Right? A lot of it is upload to the Common App for essays. But again, the document portion, requesting a teacher's letter of recommendation. A lot of it for the Naviance is just requests. So they just request the teacher's recommendation and that's it. Which means they put the teacher's email in and then the teacher then uploads their letter of recommendation to Naviance and it goes directly to the Okay, and it's synced in that way. Common application, okay. So forms to complete, again, um, highlighted. This will help. Uh, counselors as well as some teachers to write the letters of recommendation on behalf of your student. So there is a parent brag sheet where you can get to brag about your babies, and then there's a self-evaluation questionnaire where our students get to brag about themselves. And what we notice is, is some of our students are extremely shy about drawing about themselves. So this is the time where we say, like, just just put it all on paper so that your counselor can highlight those things that you truly want college to see more. So that's a link, so again, um, that will be on the website, so you can complete that almost like tomorrow once it's uploaded, because we're going to put this one up there for you all to utilize, okay? No, 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 this is just, again, so for some of you all, again, like, so with that said, this is just an additional, this isn't mandated, right? This is just support if you want, so I had a parent come the other day, and they're like, we just transferred to the district. Um, we came from a private school. We know that the counselor has to write this letter of recommendation. The counselor sent these forms. Correct. This is going to be on the, the school counselor website. Okay. And I can put in the old last week's Thursday, too. Like, as a, rec as a refresher from last week, here's the uh, presentation from Thursday night. Because these links are all active. So you just click on it and then you can come to the forms. And the, and the counselors will discuss that with students when they push into the classrooms. Okay. So again, this link, basic 
basically a lot of the questions, I didn't want to go too deep into the college application um, process, but again, this like, because every school is different, so some of your students will have a December 1st deadline, some will have a rolling admissions deadline, some will have a February 1st deadline. So this kind of walks through and gives you kind of like a checklist of where your student and you all should be throughout this process. Okay. Scholarships will be emailed to students through Naviance. So throughout the course of the year, um, counselors, myself, teachers, we get these opportunities emailed to us. So we try to push that out to students. So they will be emailed through, them, through Naviance. So just remind your students, I was with a student the other day in the library, and they opened up their email account and had like more unread emails than Ms. Langley. But, um, <laughs> so I was like, you gotta get through that. You're a senior, you're gonna need to check your emails because that admissions counselor is gonna be reaching out. Teachers are going to be reaching out, and that's what the scholarship offer is going to be. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Michelle is now payroll, so we're probably going to have to discuss. Right? I don't know if she's going to want to take that on this year.
title. Because the, the Italian Heritage One, when you redo it, students can take the Italian class here and then be able to participate and uh, put forth an application for that. Right? So there are, there are multiple different ways to really establish it. So sometimes the students will just see it and be like, oh, that doesn't apply to me. I wasn't a Boy Scout. But then there's other underlying leadership skills that they can apply to. So we had counselors pulling folks in last year, like, you should apply. So again, uh, communication is key. We also send like the scholarship opportunities out through our old blast every week, with it being linked. Um, so we start that next week. Uh, parent portal to stay on top of the student checking grades. Um, and then lastly, the Osmond High School website, where you can find a lot of information. Throughout the course of the year, we post our presentations, we post videos, we post snippets, and we post information on there as well. Social media, you can follow Osmond High School on any of those. Um, you can follow Principal Langley. Um, and thank you. But well, we have a, another presentation about financial aid. Now, this is important because financial aid last year changed. Right? The, fund, uh, the federal government made a very different process. It all went digital. So the reason why some folks are like, well, with my former student, I did financial aid in October. They do open up in December. But it's a federal website, and my counseling team and working with Latino U, we have a boot camp here. So working with them, we're going to essentially wait till January, because the software, we want to let them get the kinks in. Uh, because what happened last year was, a lot of folks did it in December. The system kind of crashed. It basically didn't work. It was asking folks for key and responses and IDs all over again. So by the time we did it in January, it was kind of like, folks said again, it was working pretty well. Okay? So that's why we're kind of going to wait. I know like they gave us a December 1st date, but we're going to have our fast night in January again because it seemed to have worked out extremely well this year. So, yes, because again, like you never know, and it helps the colleges determine kind of like where to uh, spend their dollars. So oftentimes, colleges will say, please have your students do it. To be quite frank, some of my colleagues say it's good for them as an admissions team or a scholarship team on the back end, because it also helps them decide where the money can go, right? So when they have accurate data and accurate information, they can then support to determine where money can go. But then also, they see that love for dollars, and they're like, hey, maybe we can support a student in an academic or merit scholarship. That's when they can just 
distribute funds. Yeah. 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 Right, so we have a lovely presenter here. Ms. Rodriguez, so I'm going to answer to this question, but Ms. Rodriguez will touch on anything financial aid from TAP to Pell. She's a member of the Higher Education Service Corporation from New York State, so she's connected with the financial aid process. So she's going to better answer your questions. Yeah. Without further ado, and I'm going to switch over to Ms. Rodriguez's uh, presentation, but we have Ms. Rodriguez from the Higher Education Service Corporation, who again services the New York State TAP Tuition Assistance Program, but also they are key for having the insight into the federal program and having more information because they meet constantly with our federal government. So, Um, 
aware of all the different opportunities that are there for you guys. I don't think I'm going to be able to play this video, but this is a great video that does go over the different type of financial aid. And here is a little more information about the different type, grants, scholarship, and federal loan. Grants, you don't have to pay them back. So basically, uh, the first one, the federal Pell Grant, is the free money the student will get when they complete the FAST application. And then the Federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant and Work Study are two programs that are federal, but they're going to be given to the student by the colleges. And that's why it's so important for you guys to complete uh, the application, because if you don't qualify for the Pell Grant, which is the free money, then you might be able to get some through um, the Federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant or Work Study. Work Study was a question that the FASA used to have this year. That um, question is no longer on the application. So you guys need to find out how our college is going to be distributing the funding for those um, because you know they're not going to be asking that question anymore. And um, the last one is the, is the, the program that we administer in my agency, and this is the most popular program that we have, is the New York State Tap. And student can qualify to receive a minimum of $1,000 or a maximum of $5,665. And it's just going to depend on the family financial situation. Um, a great thing was that the government this year increased the income bracket for families from $80,000 to $125,000. So this is opening the door for more family to be eligible to receive a tap on and I was, I think I clicked too fast. I have to talk about the scholarship. Scholarship, and I think you guys were discussing it uh, previously, is so important. It can be based on need, that they will look at the family financial. Other ones might be able um, to see the student talent, academic, how they're doing, athletic ability, even artistic. So just make sure that you start looking for community, um, organization, foundation, parents, employers, sometimes if you are part of a labor union, sometimes they also have scholarships. So start your research early. And then the last one, you know, which sometimes parents don't think that this is also part of the financial aid process, is loans. Uh, hopefully many of you will not be in this situation, but if you are, it's important for you guys to know that the subsidized loan for student is the best um, one for them because what happens is that the government will pay for the interest rate while they're in school. And subsidized, on the other hand, will start accruing interest as soon as that money is sent to the college. So this is a topic of conversation that parents and students should be having. Uh, at this point, so that when they are creating that college list, or they're thinking about where they're going to go, they can then um, make a clear assessment of what parents will be able to do for them. And now, how do you qualify for need based? This is a formula that colleges will use to determine what would be the financial need that the student has if we asset that student to attend our institution. So basically, it's the cost of attendance minus the student aid in this, and then minus any other financial assistance that the student might be receiving from parents' employer or uh, private scholarship. So cost of attendance will always include tuition fee, room and board, books, transportation, and other expenses that are unique to the colleges. But it's so important for you guys to really have a clear list of the school that you're in or your son is trying to attend because then you will have a clear understanding of what it will be the cost of attending. And remember, the student choice is going to have a lot of uh, impact on what will be the cost of attending. So a student who is going to a uh, public college is not going to pay the same of a student who is going to a private one or a student who is going to, um, you know, uh, live on campus versus a student that is going to uh, commute to college, the cost is going to be totally different. And a big one, a student who is thinking of leaving New York, just remember, you can save your federal aid anywhere, but your state aid 
it's only for students who are attending college in New York. Okay? And then um, student aid in this is basically a calculation that the federal government will do based on the information that you will complete on your FAFSA application. And it doesn't change. So it will be, if that calculation indicates that your family um, can contribute $10,000, to say a number, then that will be made to all the colleges that you guys will be applying to, to attend. All right? Uh, and then any other financial needs. So when the colleges have those three calculations, then they can consider what would be the need that that student has. Some colleges are very generous, and they will cover the whole financial need that that student has. Other colleges um, will give you a partial um, scholarship, and other ones will not give you anything. That's why it's so essential that you guys are able to compare um, which of the colleges is really giving you the best financial aid package. And always talk with the uh, financial aid officers it's amazing how sometimes doing that connection, you know, that phone call, that email, indicating to them the situation of the family will grant some student so much aid that somebody that just take the information or the package that they have given you by, you know, by face out. So always uh, reach out to them. And then here are the sources of financial aid. So the federal government, which is administered by the Department of Education, New York State Student Aid, which is administered by the agency that I represent, has private scholarship and institutional aid. So federal aid. Federal aid has been giving us a lot of edit um, for the last year because they made so many changes that really were intended to really um, alleviate some of the stress and the confusion that family were experiencing when they were um, completing the application. And it just didn't work. Um, right now, we are still not going to be able to go back to open the application October 1st, because what they're doing now is that they're going to try to um, open it up for a very limited number of students and institutions October 1st, just to see and evaluate some of the problems that they were experiencing this year and solve them before we open the application to everyone. But you guys will be able to um, start completing the application December 1st. And I totally agree. Um, you know, in my experience working, um, completing application, helping students, the application always crashes that first two weeks. So we always tell students this way, let other parents and students <laughs> go through the mess of the technical issues that they have. And um, it's important for you guys to just wait um, see how it's working. In January, um, is the perfect time. You're not going to miss any funding. You know, if you're eligible for those funding, those funding will be needed. And then um, we, um, so we created a, um, this is what the program that you guys will be applying to be seen when you complete the FASA. Well, that, which is that same money. And um, supplemental education opportunity grant, we're starting to program that are federal, but are, are going to be given to you guys by the colleges themselves. So finding out how a college is going to be distributing those funding is key. Sometimes they will distribute a whole um, family that have financial need. Other times they will divide that into new family and the financial need and also academic. So FAFSA opens up 18 months, so it's, it's, the deadline for, for you to complete it should be um, based on the colleges. Colleges might ask students to be done by February 2nd, so they should be um, doing it by that time. But FAFSA will open until um, June of 2026, so you have to do it, but then you have also the uh, main first deadline for students to decide where they're going to go. So there's a lot of deadlines that I want for you guys to keep in mind because uh, you know you have to make a decision and you have to have completed your uh, financial aid. Right? Yes. 
because basically what they're going to be looking at is if there have been any changes of the family financial. Um, so there might be a year where you don't qualify and then the family year, you know, the family can have an exit job or a family situation and they haven't qualified for that So, you know, it will be an easier process because all your personal identifier information is there. So basically what you're going to be doing is more um, updating information about the finances. Well, no, for you guys, it's not going to open October, it's going to open December 1st. They will have a limited amount of students that will be doing basically a trial to see how the system will work. Yes. 
So basically, it's connected with your social security number. So when you create one, it's for that student, and even for you, if you decide that you want to go to college, and then for any um, other children. Is connected with your social. No. So this uh, FSA ID you can create at the same time because it's, you're going to be adding your information, basically your social, all your personal identifier information. Shouldn't take more than 15 minutes. It's a very easy process. And if you guys um, also, you know, you can go to YouTube to the federal. Um, government website and they have a wonderful video that I use when I'm, I'm doing my presentation. It's an old video, you will be in an old language, but it really walks you through the process of how to create it. There's two different applications, and I'm going to move to talk about New York State, but so FASA, federal, for Pell Grant, loans, or study. And then um, the next one is that going to be. transfer to the tab. Unfortunately, because of the changes and the application not working properly, um, it doesn't seem that that's going to be available this year either. Uh, because the, the application was just um, a mess last year. Um, not only for a family creating their FSA ID, but the application itself. So we are, um, and as of, as of now, um, we are thinking that we will be opening up December 1st, just like the... Uh, so I will be here college. Yes. Yes. And basically the same thing. Information, uh, personal information is going to be there. You probably will just be updating a lot of the changes information, if anything change, and then the financial. So basically we are um, processing half a million grants and scholarship in this program. Um, application each year, and we also have won nearly one billion dollars for almost 330,000 students. And um, we are hoping to increase that number because we know that a lot of New Yorkers are really leaving a lot of money at the table. So please um, apply, and then also look for other programs that we administer. And here are some of those: the Selfie Scholarship, Wall Street Center Memorial Scholarship. New York State Memorial Scholarship and High Tuition Award, STEM, Math and Science, and Master in Education. So we are limited to 25 plus programs, so please uh, make sure that you take advantage. Sure, yes. about TAP. TAP in, uh, increased the amount of um, the, the income from 80000 to 125000 and the minimum that a student can receive is 
thousand dollars. And basically, what they do is they divide that thousand um, dollars for two semesters, so five hundred and five hundred. And then the last one is five five thousand six six five, and it's going to depend on your income. And we will not look at your federal income, but your state and your state income information. And um, you have to apply annually. And basically, you know, uh, you can get a thousand dollars the first year, but then if your family income changes for the second year, that money can also increase. Please, this is the time. Okay. So this is uh, the program. Any program. Yeah, any private. Okay. Okay. So any um, college in New York State, um, you know, they, they will uh, apply for it and that money will go to whichever college the student is attending. So basically when, um, in the past, <laughs> we used to take, you know, they will do a list of colleges in their FAFSA. We will take one um, in New York, and then if that was not the college that the student decided to attend, then the student just needed to go in and change um, to the school that they were attending, and then we will send the funding to that to that college. And then sometimes we will send funding to colleges that they're not attending, but the college will send it back, and then we usually reach out to the student. Or sometimes they will tell us that the school haven't received the money, so just be mindful of that as well. Uh, and then, you know, since we're not leaving to the FASA anymore, or hopefully in the near future, but not, probably not this year, um, you know, you will have to manually add one of the schools that are in New York, and then if that's not the one that you will decide by May 1st, then you will just have to go and update the information. So another program that we have that we are very proud of is the New York State the door to so many students that didn't qualify for um, aid through uh, New York State. They still don't qualify for federal aid, but they can apply to um, New York State aid by completing the three math application, and then they will apply to all the programs, TAP, Excelsior, STEM, but they will have to meet all the requirements that a regular student needs to meet. For the tab. So basically, the, well, the FAFSA is federal, so they have their own criteria about the financial um, that you need to report, and they have made it easy this year. You don't you don't have to manually add it or um, use any other system. Basically, what um, happens is that you will have to give consent so that your financial information is transferred directly from the IRS to the um, FAFSA application. So you will, this, that's a great question. So basically, um, you will be doing, when you're completing financial aid application, you will be doing prior to prior year. So you will be reporting 2023. Yes. That's a great question. And then the Celsius Scholarship is another program, um, but it's important for you guys to know that there are requirements. So every program that you are applying, just make sure that you understand what are the requirements. What do you have to do in order to continue to receive it? Because we see students losing it. Um, because some of those programs like this one require the student to take 30 credit per year. Um, and if they miss that, those 30 credit, then they will be kicked out of the program. Um, other program will require the family to keep a certain income bracket. If the income goes up, you might lose that um, opportunity to reapply. So always apply for all the free programs but always understand what is it that you should be doing or what are the requirements if you're going to miss on that program when you are applying. And then the enhanced tuition award is the same as the Celsius, um, but it's for private colleges who are participating, not every college participate. But the student can receive up to 6,000 in tuition. And this is a, a Celsius, and this one are two programs that are the last dollar because they 
free public tuition. So if your tuition is free public like TAP and any other program, and you're still qualified for the cells here, when your tuition is covered, you're not going to get anything from this one. Okay? Because they only cover tuition. And then there's another requirement for this program and the associate, which is after you graduate, we are expecting you to stay in New York for the same amount of year that we uh, provided you with the scholarship. And if you're working, to work in New York. So requirements are so important for any program that you are applying to. <laughs> and then institutional aid. Institutional aid is aid that is going to be coming from the colleges themselves. So that's why it's so important for you guys to complete FASA and TAP, regardless of you not um, being eligible for financial aid based on need, because this is what you will be getting. When colleges see that the family is not getting Pell, it's not getting TAP, then they will see the program that they offer to students, and then they will um, offer those programs to you. One of the most popular program or application is the CSS profile. You should be checking to see if any of the students is interested in applying to a college that requires this form. This form is lengthy. It's over 300 questions. And it has a lot of information about your finances. Because they want to make sure that we're going to be giving the funding to students that really need um, the funding to, to attend their institution. So it's important for you guys to start planning for that as well. And this application, I believe it's going to be opening October 1st. I don't think that they're going to change their um, opening date as fast as opening date. And I think um, you guys also discussed a little bit about this. I always tell students and families this is a multi-level source of financial aid because this option you know, is not mandated. This is something that you guys do uh, on your own time, and a lot of students do not take advantage of it. Um, so please apply to as many as you can. Um, and basically, some of them might be based on merit, need base, collective base, um, community. Scholarship, uh, private scholarship. Um, sometimes, you know, um, students and parents overlook um, community-based organization, your bank. Uh, a lot of uh, those organizations that you use in the community, some of them have um, scholarship to apply. And sometimes, a lot of programs uh, don't give that money away because um, they have very few students applying to them. So, um, start the process of applying, especially. If you are one of those families who need to take loans, um, you know, if you have to take $20,000 in loan and you find $10,000 in private uh, scholarship, you're money because remember, not only are you taking that $20,000, there's going to be an interest rate that is going to start accruing as well. So um, take advantage of it. And then where do you find um, some of those scholarships? Like I mentioned, you employer, if you're part of a union, um, community organization that you're a part of, just make sure that you start your search. And I'm going to move forward. Oops. I'm going back. I'm going to move forward. This is a few um, of those um, websites. 
But I want to put this one because this is the list that I did personally of when my daughter was in high school. This is the information that um, her guidance counselor used to send us. Whenever there was a scholarship coming up, she will send us information about the deadline, what you needed to do. And I created that um, based on that. And the first one, on legal, is the uh, one that is very personal to me because my daughter's um, fiance, he just finished his um, uh, degree um, during the summer. And his last two years were um, paid fully by that organization. He is a mechanical engineer, and um, they have great um, scholarships. So please make sure that you apply to as many as you can. And if you can look into a career pathway that um, your son or your daughter is interested in, in pursuing, um, those are so helpful as well. The one before, yes. And I'll, I'll, I have another slide where I'll have all of them. Um, but um, yeah, just make sure that when you are um, doing um, research, that um, you know there's a lot of fraud um, organizations that are trying to get students' information. Make sure that if they're asking you to make uh, the uh, for the for the application, you should be very um, Options for that, and if you have any questions, please um, talk to the guidance counselor. You can even talk to us, and we will be sure that um, it's all because it's a, le a legitimate um, organization. And then this is one I'm going to bombard you with so much information in this one. Um, but as you can see, you probably recognize many of those organizations, and <coughs> many of them they do have scholarships. You know, I always say, you know, this is very general, so everyone is going to be applying to them. But um, focus on just searching for um, a lot of the opportunity. There's also a few um, search engines such as Fast Web College or Scholarship.com, Career One Stop. I do recommend that um, when you are applying to those, create a separate email. Um, just for scholarship because they will bombard you with a lot of information. Um, so I always say that. Just create an email address for um, scholarship and um, you know your inbox is not going to be <laughs> full. And then um, what should you be doing now? Completing the application as early as possible. But like I said, um, you know, it's going to happen December 1st. I always recommend to wait those two, two, at least two weeks um, just because of the technical issue that um, every year, not just because of the changes, but every year since I've been working um, in helping students complete FASA, there's always issue happening when they first open the application. And then um, we will be hosting, and I know that um, you guys will be hosting here, but we host um, FASTA and TAP completion events virtually, so um, please feel free to join us. Um, we do a lot of um, presentation. We do this same presentation Tuesdays and Thursday from 6 to 7. Um, we do um, the FSAID um, walkthrough on Mondays at 4. So please feel free to take advantage of all those opportunities so that um, it's, it will be an easy process for you to navigate because we know how confusing um, it can be. And then, you know, I think I'm not going to talk about registering for SAT because I think that was covered. But it's just important for you guys to just start um, researching um, the scholarship um, aspect of it, especially if you are a family that might not qualify for me basically. And then, you know, if a college gives you a, um, you know, financial package and you um, think that um, you are not going to be able to, make sure that you reach out to them and see if there's any other program. Sometimes, just by having a conversation, a lot of those um, representatives will find other funding um, to, to give to that student, but you have to make sure that you tell them that you need more support. And then um, just make sure that um, you complete all the application, check college deadlines. And I know that you guys have a super team here that will walk you through that process. 
but you know, it's, it's unfortunate sometimes students miss this deadline, and um, you know, if you miss that deadline, more likely you're not you're not gonna get into that um, school if that's one of your first choices. So it's important for you guys to just get organized. Uh, we see that family that are organized. You know, I see family creating spreadsheet um, with deadlines, um, not only about the admission process, the financial aid uh, forms, but also the search for uh, private scholarships. It's so important. And then, um, you know, I said it when we were talking about loan, discussing affordability. Um, it's, it should be a topic that you guys should be uh, discussing right now. And I can tell you that. Um, my daughter wanted to go to a private college. That private college didn't give her a very good financial aid package. And um, she needed to take loan, very <laughs> big loan, and I had to take loan. And I was like, I am not, I want to retire. And I think we have to be honest with our children about that. We cannot, um, you know, sign on loans when we know it's going to take us like 30 years or <laughs> more to pay it. So we have to. I was honest with her. She was not very happy with me for a few months. But then when she graduated, stayed alone, paid for, she moved out of my house right away. <laughs> I was already making plan which bill she was going to pay, but she had another thing for me. So it's important for us to be honest, you know, and it's important for them to also realize that they have to pay loans back and they might take and you know I'm saying twenty thousand dollars but you know that twenty thousand dollars probably not even gonna cover um, one one semester but we have to be honest you know that's going to be something that is going to stop them sometime from being a independent uh, financial person uh, after graduation and it should be an honest conversation now if anybody has any questions no questions? Sorry. I know, right? The first one is the federal government website. The second one is our main uh, agents, uh, a main uh, website. But then the last one is the email address. So if you have any questions, you can um, send them to my email and a representative will get back to you. Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez, again. And before you, there was a question about the bond. On the bond website, you could print there is a mail in ballot. So I got that answer. Also, to Ms. Caparelli, I left. But there are schools that don't super score. It's very minimal. It's 103, I believe. Most of them in New York, there's only two Cayuca College and I don't even know the other one. So, like the, the super score, there are 103 colleges that don't, but most of them are either faith based organizations. And then in New York, there's only two Cayuca and some other one. But everybody else super schools, like the Harvard, the Princeton, the MIT, the Yale's. So, yes, Belmont doesn't. So Belmont is, I've seen a couple of applications for Belmont for the course of years in Tennessee and University of Arizona. Those are two, two big ones if your kids want to go West Coast. Okay? All right, thank you all. Yeah, yeah, I have to fact check these things. I appreciate that. Have a great night, everybody.